Welcome back, everybody, to the True Bro Down. Today I found a video I just wanted to do because I really enjoy this man's content. His name is Isaac Butterfield. He's an Australian comedian whose channel I found several months ago. I would say it's been well over a year now, but uh, he's a very entertaining man and he recently visited the United States. And listening to what he has to say about our country is something that I find very interesting. Uh, I know being from Australia, there were a lot of things that happened there during the lockdowns that, you know, us as Americans looked down upon and said, you know, this is, you know, this is borderline socialism. But who are we to talk? We live in a country that is borderline socialist at this point. I want to hear what he has to say about his visit to America. So without further ado, let's do it. Hey ladies and gentlemen, my name's Isaac Butterfield and over the past couple of weeks I have toured around the great country, the superpower, the United States of America. Right now I am in Los Angeles right next to the airport before I head back LA. to Australia tomorrow and I tell you what, I have noticed some very peculiar things, some big differences I bet between you have. Australia, the great land down under and America. On the first day that I was here, I saw some very interesting sights. I saw some dude who thought he was the next Biggie Smalls. I saw a naked lady, an entire naked old lady on the beach, complete pancake fucking ass. It was very interesting. And I saw a dude on the streets injecting himself with something that I can only describe as probably not insulin. You're in America, they're shooting up heroin. That is legal in California, so yeah, I bet that is a bit of a culture shock. There are huge differences between the country that I'm in right now, America, and where I call home, Australia. And ladies and gentlemen, I've compiled a list for you so you can understand the biggest differences between Australia and I'm America. ready. Number one, tipping. Okay, tipping is a massive thing here because American companies pay their employees I think the technical term in the financial sector is fuck all. Like if you work at a cafe, you might get $5 an hour. So they rely on tips from customers to make a decent livable wage. But can I just say this? Fuck your tipping. Fuck off, get fucked. If you've never been to America, this is how it works. <laughs> Once you've bought something, you've bought a beer, you've yep. bought a meal, you pay for that meal, and then you have to pay an extra 20 or 25% to tip the person who's brought the plate to you. It is absolutely fucked. And even if you hate the person that gave you the things, you still have to tip them. If you tip them any less than 15%, you may as well have walked over there, shoved He's your finger up point. their ass and said, fuck you into their ears. The second big difference is you crazy motherfuckers drive on the wrong side of the road. Let's talk about tipping real quick. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I'm all for tipping somebody that gives me good service, somebody that's polite, somebody that's that gives you a good experience. I've had many instances where I was expected to tip when my my service was poor, my order was incorrect. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why I feel like I would begin at 20% tip. You give me good service, I'm going to give you 20% of it as, as the tip. So. You know, for a $40 meal, I'm going to give you $8 tip. And I'm fine with that as long as the service is good. It does make things a lot more expensive because the price of food has gone up so much. But if I'm starting you at $8, every time I need a drink refilled and you're nowhere to be found, if I have a question about something and you can't seem to answer it, or if you just have a crap attitude, I start deducting from that tip. The strange thing is I still tip. Even if the service is horrible, I still tip. I just feel that obligation. And as Americans, I believe that's just been bred into us that we are supposed to tip. It doesn't make sense, but I always tip regardless of if the service is good or not. It just depends on how good the service is as to how much I tip. So. 
maybe that'll help Isaac kind of understand how we see tipping because I couldn't agree with him more. I think we should just pay a wage and remove the tip because we're paying enough for the food as it is. And tipping is just something that most countries find ridiculous. Okay, and I know that they're going to sit there and say, no, obviously you idiots in Australia drive on the wrong side of the road. But I'm the one with the camera, so suck a big fat cock. When you come to America and We're on the right side. they drive on the other side of the road, you're stuck with a few yes. things you need to work out. One of them being, I don't know how to cross a road. You look like an idiot. When you go to cross the road, you're looking in the wrong direction because the cars are coming from the other direction. You're going to get hit, all right? There's no looking left, then right. You have to look right, then left. That is so confusing. The third big difference... I bet that is weird. Americans, I've never been to Europe I'm or Australia, sorry. so it'd be odd for me. Fucking rude. Like, you guys are so rude here's a real scenario okay we were in an airport the other day i misplaced my water bottle we're not rude so in the south in my back pocket and there was a very similar water bottle with the dude next to me on the table in front of me i said excuse he me he had to have been your in water bottle he looked at me new deep york in my eyes or cali goes, uh -huh, or somewhere like that why do you want to know if it's my water bottle I thought, what the fuck mate i'm just asking i'm trying to work something. In Australia, you know what we do? You know what we fucking do? If someone was confused about whose water bottle was who, we would give them our water bottle, we'd build them a house, we'd tuck their grandma into bed, and we'd go down on her just because we're good fucking people. On that exact same day, we'd only been in the country for a few hours, the dude on the plane that we were on told a mother with a crying child to tell that child to keep it down. Oh yeah, you're gonna have a conversation with a baby about not crying? But how is that conversation gonna go? Excuse me, fucking Steve, little baby Steve. You know you're crying and upsetting people. And what Steve's gonna sit there? I hate people right, when they talk about really children be doing like this, that. You fucking idiot! In Australia, if you said that to a mother and a child, the entire army would be deployed to your house, and you'd be sh blown the fuck up. They As they should. We went to New York, LA, and Florida. The Florida people were actually quite nice. New there York, you go. LA, Suck me off. Number four New York, is similar LA. to the last one. It's the idea of saying thank you. That's where they're supposed to be LA, tolerant. We found that people don't know how to act when an Australian says thank you. If I give you something, what do you say? You say thank you and I say, hey, no worries. Too easy, all good. In America, do you know what they say when you say thank you for something? They say, uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right, just say no worries. Do you know how much that upsets me? Pick up your polite game. It's not that fucking hard. He should have spent America, more time in the sure South. He would have loved it. Number five, and this isn't a difference, but this is something you'll notice as an Australian when you get to America, that you go full bogan. Now, I don't know if all Americans know what the term bogan is, but it's mm. sort of like a redneck, right? So redneck. when I stepped foot in America, I went from me talking like me right now, quite, you know, I'm good at enunciating most words and all that type of shit, to within about five minutes, walking up to people going, G'day mate, you want to know if I can get a little, can I get a lift on that Uber over there, big fella? Like, people didn't know what the fuck I was saying. It's truth, too easy, big fella. Oh, bloody, yeah, nah, too easy. People didn't know what the fuck I was saying. I went so full bogan Aussie, immediately when I stepped foot in this country. I don't know why, I just think it's because we know that Americans like Australian accents, and as soon as they hear it, they go, wow, you're an Aussie, that's so cool. I have to sidebar on this one. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I moved to New York, and I was amazed by the amount of people that just truly expected me to sound like I was from the Dukes of Hazzard. They would make comments like, you know, you, you, you seem intelligent coming from the South. Thanks. I get it, Isaac. I totally understand exactly what you're talking about there. And I will live in this country. So next time you come visit, spend some more time in the South. You need to hit Texas. You know, you, you need to hit Georgia. You know, Florida's great. So good on you. You did Florida. I'm like, yeah, mate, I'm a fucking Aussie. Yeah, I fucking rode a kangaroo to fucking Qantas's fucking airport. The Prime Minister shook me in as I flew off and I cracked a Foster's, Foster's beer on the way. Jesus Christ, I'm drunk. And I got an echidna up my ass. How fucking good am I? Even my beautiful fiance Claire, she hammed it up as well. This is an exact quote from her. She said this to the lady at TSA. Fucking get a struth a barramundi around here. Fucking Vegemite. Bindi Irwin. Vegemite. The great thing about America is you can have any accent and you are welcome. Unless you have an Arabic accent. Then not so much. Number six, the food is almost Maybe. better in America. Now, what I mean by that is the food is bigger. Now, I am 
you know, I'm not fat, but I'm not skinny. I'm somewhere in the middle, but I'm a fat boy at heart. And when I see the portion sizes in America, my food dick, whatever that is, <laughs> gets real bloody hard. My first night in America, Claire and I got a pizza each. And we didn't know what our size to order or anything like that. We just ordered some and it was like $60 US. But they came and they were huge, right? They weighed about four kilos. And I tell you what, kilos. I'm pretty sure the Los Angeles sewer system was blocked from a day from the both of us. Number seven, we ladies do eat a lot and gentlemen, of the alcohol is so cheap. There was a bottle of Smirnoff at the supermarket cheaper. I was at last night. It was like two hands. It was huge. It was massive. I think it was almost two liters, and it was sixteen US dollars, which I think is like twenty-one bucks Australian. We That's get expensive. Fucked with taxes in Australia when it comes to alcohol, it is horrible. It is highway fucking robbery. And you have alcohol everywhere. You got it in pharmacies, shopping centres, gas stations, which are petrol stations. You got them everywhere you might need them. Abortion centres. <laughs> you have. Alcohol it's always at an arm's reach, which is really handy if you're a homeless person who is an alcohol dependent. And I know why this happens, right? I know why this happens. I know why it's so expensive in Australia. You've heard of Big Pharma or Big big Oil, yep. these big powers that be that keep the prices high or low or whatever, keep people in government. This is Big Goon. All right. You know the wine casks that Australian young people drink? Big goon is the reason that Australians have to drink expensive alcohol. All right, because So when you're a kid and you start drinking for the first time, you don't go and get the expensive stuff. You're stuck with the goon, which is $12, gets you extremely drunk, probably makes you lose your virginity, and you'll probably end up pregnant, which is great. Imagine but him buying a case of Natty Light. Go to one of their abortion centers and have a couple of beers on me. Number eight, the big difference here is no one understands what Australians are on about. Colloquial Colloquialisms do not work here. Colloquialism being a term or a phrase that is a local language. In Australia, we have heaps of them. Dry as a dead dingo's donger. That means it's really dry wow. out, right? Makes I'm good, good that fucking one. sense. I was in an Uber the other day that nearly got sideswiped by a Porsche, right? It was really, really crazy. It happened really quick. And I said to old mate, oh, spew, and that was bloody close. He looked at me like I just said to him, oi, governor, <laughs> can I shine your shoes? It was ridiculous. He was like, what the fuck is this prick talking about? What are we, in the fucking 1800s? Or that old lady at the shopping centre the other night. I said, hey, you going? She looked at me like like I just groped her on the tit. I did grope her on the tit, but don't look at me like that. Christ, have some respect. Anyway, fuck you and not understanding my colloquialisms. Number nine, the big difference is tourism. There's so many great things to see in America. In New York, you could spend months there walking around. And we, we, we did about 20,000 steps every day and we still didn't get to see everything. In Australia, okay, if you come to Australia, you see the Great Barrier Reef, you fly over it there, you've seen it, it's a big fucking coral reef. You go to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, there's a bridge, you know, you've seen bridges before, and you go to Melbourne and see a protest or something. That is fucking it. There's nothing to see in Australia. Piss off. Number 10 and the last big difference is comedy. I was lucky to see Joe Rogan Good. here uh, do a show in Jacksonville in Florida. A massive crowd, about 15,000 people. Tony Hinchcliffe opened up for him. And you know what I learned? I learned that in Australia, we are the biggest pussies when it comes to stand-up comedy. We are so terrified about not getting spots on the project or on the, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival Roadshow or on That's Channel interesting. 10. Comedians refuse to do jokes that push the boundaries. In Australia, we are fucking scared and that shit needs to stop. I was so motivated after I saw that show. I thought to myself, oh my God, I've been hamstringing myself not doing particular jokes because I feel like they're too offensive and I'm going to get cancelled again. Fuck that. Not anymore. I'm fucking going Good. for it, ladies and gentlemen. If I think something's funny, I'm going to tell it to a crowd and if they think it's funny, then fucking oath, I'll keep doing it. And on that topic, come and see me live. I'm doing shows all around Australia and... I should be in America by the end. Oh, I'd love to see him. So if you're from America, he'd be fun to watch live. On my website, go over there and sign up to get an email when I'm on tour. I love your country. Your people are weird. <laughs> your people are you weird. What, New York, you got a lot of people that talk to themselves. I feel like you need some, you know, chemtrails just to fly over there with some antipsychotics, and that's the problem solved. Ladies I and agree. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Be dick sticks. Toodaloo. Au revoir. Bye bye. I love Isaac. He's right. He's right about a lot of what he said. Now, as far as the comedians not being hamstrung, compared to what we used to be able to get away with or what comedians were able to get away with, yeah, I mean, they, they walk a, they walk on eggshells. Uh, old school Dave Chappelle, Richard Pryor, George Carlin, they could get away with saying whatever the hell they wanted, and they did. 
and it was hilarious. You know, we went from blazing saddles all the way up until Tropic Thunder, and then that's where it stopped. I can't do movies like that anymore, even though they are absolutely hilarious and everyone enjoyed them, no matter the race, gender, didn't matter. People love those movies. Now they're just not acceptable. So, yeah, it's interesting to see what an Australian thinks of our culture. I wish he would have spent more time in the South. I think he would have had a more enjoyable time because coming from someone who has spent time in New York, I have spent time in L.A., uh, what he said is absolute fact. I mean, I'm used to opening doors for people and saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, sir, yes, sir. And those types of things in New York and California and other places similar to that are just not acceptable. They get offended. So I really wish he'd have spent some more time in the South. But I enjoyed it. I like Isaac. Uh, you should absolutely go to his channel and subscribe. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got anybody else you'd like for me to react to, please drop it down in my comments. Let me know who you got in mind. And until the next time, come at me, bro.